rest of us and who now reigns in our hearts, in our wills, in our minds, in our emotions, in our bodies, in our homes, in our church, in our city, in our nation and in the whole earth we know who you are you have not stopped reigning the God who rules in the affairs of men we enter your word with humility I pray for this presence and unction to follow us into the world to open it up that we may behold great and wondrous things father that every heart will be set on fire this afternoon every heart lord god will see what they haven't seen before every heart will be strengthened comforted and encouraged to press on into the fullness of your glory. In Jesus' name. Today happens to be Pentecost Sunday. According to the Jewish calendar, not the Christian calendar, I, in the last many years, I be I follow the Jewish calendar. You know, ever since God began to teach me and show me things, I've I have uh, two or three websites uh, uh, where they show all the Jewish uh, feasts. It's exactly fifty days from. The resurrection, which is, you know, the Sunday after Passover. You have Passover, which is Friday. Then you have the Sabbath. The Jews call it Shabbat. And then on Sunday, which was what we call Easter Sunday, in the Jewish, in the Jewish uh, timetable is the sheaf of first fruits, which Jesus did. Jesus fulfilled his first fruits from the dead. And then they start counting, you know, and they count seven Sabbaths. And the day after the seventh Sabbath, which happens to be a Sunday, which is today, is, that's why it's called Pentecost. It means 50. That's from the Greek. And we all know from history and the Bible that over 2,000 years ago, in the city of Jerusalem, the first set of disciples, the 12 apostles minus Judas, the 70 who had also been under the ministry of Jesus, manifesting the uh, borrowed anointing, and some extra people, including Mary, the Holy Mother, Jesus' brothers and sisters, were all in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem under the instructions, the strict instructions of the Lord Jesus himself. Before he was taken up, he did two vital things. One, he taught them for 40 days, it was a 40-day Bible school. Things concerning the kingdom of God, because he didn't understand. So he had to go into the scriptures. He had done like a kind of preview on the road to Emmaus. Those two disciples that were going to Emmaus. And Jesus opened the scriptures to them from Moses down through the prophets of things that were written concerning him. And they said their hearts burned within them. He continued that Bible 
teaching over the next 40 days. He appeared to them at different times and he taught them from the scriptures, the prophetic scriptures. And you must understand that the scriptures were the Old Testament scriptures. The New Testament wasn't in existence at that time. The things concerning his coming, the glory of God, and the purpose of God that was going to result and come out of his resurrection. And then he gave them, the second thing he did, he gave them what we call the Great Commission. Uh, he said to them, do not depart from the city of Jerusalem until you have been endued with power from on high. And faithfully, on the day of Pentecost, somewhere about nine o'clock in the morning, they were all gathered together, as was their habit at the time. They had started to do this systematically. They would meet every day, maybe for a few hours. They would come, they would pray. Then Peter, John, and some of the apostles would share scriptures with them from what Jesus had taught them and expatiate on it. Then they would go home. They'll come back the next day. Scriptures revealed to us in Acts chapter 1 in verse 14. It says, and they all uh, continued in prayer with one accord and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. This was a thing they were doing over about uh, from his resurrection till that time, you know. And on the day of Pentecost, the scriptures reveal to us that suddenly, suddenly, there was a mighty wind from heaven. And the power of the Holy Spirit filled that room where all of them were. And suddenly they appeared on them as it were tongues of fire. And they all, including Mary, the mother of God. That's good encouragement for our Catholic brethren. Filled and they began all to speak in tongues. So Mary spoke in tongues. It's good company. So if you really honor Mary, you should speak in tongues too. Seriously. And I have no problem honoring Mary. I just have an issue worshiping her. You don't, you don't need to worship her, but you, you should honor her. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. She's a woman of faith. And she filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That experience is known in Christian circles as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Subsequently, days after that, about 3,000 people got born again, and another 5,000 got born again, and the thing began to spread. There were three, well, two other notable incidents that happened with Pentecost. Incidentally, this is going to be a short exhortation. I expect to finish in the next 10, 15 minutes. It's called the baptism of fire. That's the title of this short prophetic exhortation. And a few days, well, not a few days, a few years later, Peter was supernaturally led by the Holy Spirit to the house of a Gentile, a Roman centurion who was called Cornelius, who, like I was sharing beyond the Bible study, Cornelius is another wonderful example of a Gentile which has not the law. But it was doing by nature the things contained in the law. And God saw his heart and said, your prayers and your arms, he used to give to the poor and he used to pray. He didn't pray properly. He was a Gentile. He didn't know how to pray. He, just, he was just doing what he knew from his heart. But God honored it. You see, because see, what God honors is faith. And the honesty of the heart. Not the details. Because he knows you, your knowledge is not correct. So God ignores all of that. But looks at the heart. And said. There come up as a memorial. 
said, he sent now to Peter in Joppa. He's in the house of one Simon the Tanner. And he will tell you what you need to do. I don't go into details. Peter comes by the Holy Spirit. Begins to speak to these Gentiles. These Romans. Because uh, Cornelius not only called, he called himself and his friends and his household. And as Peter was talking, the same Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost fell upon the Gentiles. And they got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit simultaneously. They were not born again. As he was talking, in fact, he got to the point where he was talking about, you know, Jesus and he was raised from the dead. What, the Holy Ghost just waited for him just to say he was raised from the dead and they believed it. Once they believed it in their heart, instantly they got born again. The Bible said, and the Holy Ghost fell upon them and they began to speak in other tongues. And of course, Peter and the Jews who were with him, there was no argument. They said, if God has filled them with the Holy Spirit like us, are we going to start arguing theology? So they baptized. They said, who can forbid water? Incidentally, baptism of water does not get you born again. What gets you born again is believing Jesus died and he was raised from the dead. Baptism of water is just a physical ceremony that confirms what you've done inside. If, you're, if there's nothing inside, you just got wet. You need to have the thing on the inside. And it's the heart experience, the change, the supernatural change in heart by the power of the Holy Spirit that gets you born again and then fill, gets you filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44, began to speak in tongues. The third recording in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 19, the Apostle Paul goes to a city called Ephesus. And he found certain disciples. These by people were not born again yet. But they had heard about the teachings of John the Baptist. And repentance from dead works. So Paul asked them, he said, you know... Aunt, you know, he said, have you been baptized in water? Because in those days, and still today, we're supposed to baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he asked them, he said, what, until he said they would have the baptism of John. He said, oh, but you don't know about the Holy Ghost. He said, until what then were you baptized? So they now said, you know, we have said, oh, he said, okay, there's something more. You need to get born again. You know, so he got them born again and then baptized them in water and then got them through the Holy Spirit. This is about 12 people. And they all began to speak in tongues. It is of great significance to note, which is the prophetic significance of this message on the baptism of fire, that there was no fire in Cornelius' house. There was no fire in Ephesus. The fire was only on the day of Pentecost to commemorate the beginning of the event. Consequently, the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit does not include fire. It is only tongues. The thing that was consistent in all of them was a speaking in tongues. So when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the initial physical evidence of the infilling of the power of the Holy Spirit or what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. What then is the baptism of fire? The Lord Jesus himself. No, John the Baptist, excuse me. At the onset of Jesus' ministry, before the Lord was even, before he started his ministry, just, you know, just a few, maybe a few days before Jesus himself came 
and was baptized and was revealed. Jesus was always there, but he hadn't yet been revealed. And John the Baptist in Luke chapter 3, in verse 16, he tells us this. John answered, speak after me, please. John answered and said unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. That's old English. He's coming. He's not here yet. He's, he's on the way. John the Baptist was a forerunner. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I need to let you know this. Some Christians don't know this, but I'm sure a lot of us know this already. John the Baptist didn't know who Jesus was. Now, he knew Jesus, but he didn't know who he was. God forbid the same thing happens to us. You know, you can know somebody and they don't know who they are. He knew Jesus as the son of Mary and Joseph, his cousin. He knew him. That's why when Jesus came to him and said, I should baptize, he said, no, 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 come, come on. I mean, you don't need any, you don't need any repentance from sin. I know you, you, you even know the Bible better than me, I'm paraphrasing. You know, you're more spiritual than I am. He knew that from their interaction as cousins, but he did not know he was the Messiah. It was later he got to know, after the Holy Ghost came on Jesus, the Lord Jesus. He said, but one mightier than I cometh the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Watch this. He shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. Not the same. The incidents I have described to you from the day of Pentecost through the house of Cornelius to the city of Ephesus and what all of us have experienced in the last 2,000 years that has been restored you know, in a greater measure since uh, the last century, 1900 in Topeka, Kansas, then later on in Azusa Street in 1906, you know, and down through the years, which I'm a part, you're a part, we've all experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Wonderful experience, great experience. But there is another baptism waiting for us. It's the baptism of fire. And that's what I just want to leave with you this afternoon to get your hearts on fire. <laughs> Literally. Now, what is the baptism of fire? And how is it different from the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because that's why I explain what I explained. You know, even though on the day of Pentecost, the fire came. The fire that happened on the day of Pentecost, you know, was a special spectacular manifestation that commemorated the beginning of the church. But you don't see it again. Now, of course, down through the years... In Pentecostal circles, there have been occasions where people have experienced fire. I, I, I heard from, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any like that in, in my own life or experience so far. You know, people like Kenneth Hagen and others would tell us stories, you know, about, you know, sometimes when people are in a church and the fire brigade will come in America, you know, and they will see fire on top of the church. And they thought there was fire. They'll call for the you know, 911 and call for fire brigade. Fire brigade will get there. You know, there's fire, but it's not burning. Like Moses at the bush. It was a manifestation of the glory of God. Just like Moses had at the burning bush. Down through the years and the ages, we've had occasional manifestations of the fire of, 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 the, fire of the Holy Spirit. But it's not... It's not a doctrine. It's not, it's not something that you, you, you get every day. Praise the Lord. It happens sometimes. You know, sometimes God will manifest the fire. Sometimes he won't. But the tongues is constant. Good. 
Now, so then what is the baptism of fire vis-a-vis the baptism of the Holy Spirit? To understand this, the first thing we need to understand is what is meant by the word baptism. Baptism. In the scriptures, the Bible talks about the doctrines of baptisms, plural. There are actually four. There's the baptism into Christ, which is a spiritual operation. That's what happens when you are immersed. The word baptism just means immersion. So, if you, if I take a tumbler, a glass, and I have a bucket that's full of water, and I take that tumbler and I put it inside the bucket, water will fill the tumbler and surround the tumbler. Two operations. It will fill it, then it will totally surround it. So you say that that tumbler is baptized in water. So when you get born again, you become a branch of the vine. So you are immersed into the body of Christ. The second baptism is the baptism in water, which we all know, which is a physical ceremony like I explained, where, you know, a pastor or some leader, they take you inside the water completely, total immersion, then they bring you out because of your profession of the fact that you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's a physical ceremony that is indicative of a spiritual reality. You died and you rose again with Christ. So they put you into the water, symbolic of your dying with Christ, and then they bring you out, symbolic of your resurrection, you know, being raised together with Christ spiritually. But it's a symbolic uh, physical exercise. And it's very important because Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized. So I said, well, you know, well, baptism, they, they got born again without ba- water baptism. I know. But after you, I got born again, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit before. I, I didn't get baptized in water until about three or four months later. But I did it. So don't you ever say it's not important. If you have the opportunity, you, you must look for the time and the opportunity so that they get you baptized in water. Hello? Don't have a question mark on your salvation. Hello? Because it is a commandment of the Lord himself. I didn't make that commandment. Jesus did. He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's very important to obey the injunction. Even though you can have the experience and not have done it because maybe there was no water around the time you got born again. But once you get the opportunity or you get to a church, for example, we have water baptismal fonts over here. If you haven't been baptized in water, we organize and get you baptized in water. It's very important. We don't want a question mark on your salvation. I just got a text. Amen. Do you know that Satan disputed over the body of Moses? Don't let them dispute over you. If you're not baptized in water, get baptized in water. Let's leave it. The next one is baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, this is going to be the difference. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are filled and covered with the, watch this, power of the earnest of the Spirit. And it gives you the ability to speak in tongues. Now, what's the difference between that and the baptism in fire? Baptism of fire. The same thing, same Holy Ghost. The difference is this. When you now get baptized with fire, you get filled and covered with the power of the Holy Spirit. But now, instead of it being the earnest, it's now without measure. That's the difference. And that's why Jesus made a distinction and said, you baptized, you know, John the Baptist, under the Holy Spirit, said you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Scripture. Zechariah chapter 2. And look at verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2. Now, you see, uh, before I read this scripture, these are some of the scriptures 
the Lord just was opening to the disciples during those 40 days. We call them the minor prophets. You know, Hosea, Joel, Zephaniah, Zechariah, you know, Malachi. Deep inside those scriptures are prophetic uh, declarations of what God is going to do in the end time church. That was why, I'm going to read scripture in a minute, on the day of Pentecost, Peter gets up and says, this is that. Which was spoken by Joel. When they didn't understand what was happening, who told him? Jesus told him. <laughs> During those 40 days, Jesus already taught them about it. So on the day of Pentecost, Peter just took the glory and as, a, as if it was original revelation. And he said, this is that which was spoken by Joel. It was Jesus who told him. Hello, thank God for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord Jesus a clap offering, somebody. Amen. You know, and I, I shared this at the beginning of the year. You will notice that the way Peter quoted Joel, there was not the way it is in the Bible. Peter said, in the last days, it will come to pass, you know, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your young men shall see, you know, have visions and so on and so forth, you know. He quoted, that's Joel chapter 2 verse 28. But he did not, he quoted it as the last days. You know why? It was the first outpouring. Because there's going to be a second outpouring now. Amen. Which is the essence of this message. Bows on fire. And because if you read it in Joel, it doesn't say in the last days. It says afterward. And you have to connect it from verse 23. In verse 23, he says, be glad then ye children of Zion. He was talking. I'm going to come back to this. Don't go away from, um, we're, we're coming back to uh, Zechariah chapter 2 in a minute. But uh, Peter, rather, the scriptures, Joel, under the Holy Spirit, was seen ahead. He said the scripture seen. He was seen ahead. And this is what he said. He said that, you know, be glad then you children of Zion. Okay? He said, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. But he is now going to give you the former and the latter rain together as before. So Peter did not quote from verse 23. He went to quote from verse 28 and prefaced it with in the last days rather than afterward because the afterward was not yet time. So he was just saying, this is the beginning of the last days. And we're now experiencing the former rain. He didn't say it like that, but that's what that's the essence of it. That's why I said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Because everything we've got from the day of Pentecost to now is honest. But the one without measure is the one, is the fire. Now go back to Zechariah. Zechariah. And look at what it says. For I, said the Lord, will be. Everyone said will be. He didn't say I am. He's talking prophetically. He's talking futuristically. He says, I, said the Lord, will be unto her. Her who? Her the church. A what? A wall of fire round about her and will be the what? The glory in the midst of her. What's that? Baptism. Amen. In and out. Give the Lord a clap offering. It. It's a baptism of fire. I'm going to be a wall around her. Then I'm also going to be inside her. And you see this throughout in the Old Testament, and it's also true now, you know, glory, whenever there was a manifestation of the glory of God, you know, um, it also will many times will describe as fire. When Moses went to the mountain to go and get the Ten Commandments, Moses entered in to the presence of God. He was there for 40 days and 40 nights, no food, no water. Hello? But the children of Israel, you know what they saw? Fire. That's why they were afraid. 
I said, Moses, you go. <laughs> that look like he not Joe. <laughs> Moses. <laughs> Moses, you you, are not, you go, go. Whatever he tells you. When you come out of the fire, you come and tell us, we are not going in that fire with you. And you know what? They could all have gone. It's just ignorance. God said, I want all of you to be priests unto me. They said they didn't want, so God said, okay, I'll take the tribe of Levi alone. But don't let me get off on that. The important thing here is that the baptism of fire is a baptism of fire. It is having the glory of God in, within and around you. Now, a small proviso here, and it is this. It doesn't mean that when you get it, people will see fire on you all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know who our pattern is? The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, when he was baptized by John, he said the Spirit of God came upon him like a dove. He didn't say fire. But of course we know it's fire. Even though the people did not see the physical fire. They didn't see the fire physically, but it was the presence of God, the glory of God that came upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It not only came upon him, it filled him. And then he went in the power of the Spirit for the 40 days and 40 nights. And then he came out in the power of the Spirit. Then you see him start the miracles in Cana of Galilee. No fire, but fire. Because the Spirit without measure. You, you see him, he turns water to wine at the prompting of his mother, you know, and, and at the glory of God. And in fact, the scripture records it like that. He says, and he manifested forth his glory and his disciples, you know, believed on him. L let me say it in a simple way. He began to manifest the power of the spirit without measure. It is that power of the spirit without measure that we are going to be baptized with. We've been baptized with the spirit with measure. God now wants to baptize us with the spirit without measure. And it is called the baptism of fire. Scripture. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you seek. I'm going to seek the Lord here. That's what we're going to close with. We shall come, what? Suddenly. We, we've got the first suddenly for the first outpouring in Acts 2. A second suddenly is coming. We got the first outpouring starting the latter, starting the, uh, the, the, the latter days, as quoted by Peter, said, and in the last days. But we're going to have a second outpouring closing the latter days. The whole power of the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out like fire upon the church. It's going to baptize brethren, individuals, and collectively fill us with fire inside and surround us with fire on the outside. And that fire that spirit without will enable us to do the miracles Jesus did. The spirit without measure. Are you listening to me? And you see it here. He said, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Don't you never say you are the temple. Say your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about some temple in Jerusalem or some physical building. He's talking about you and I. It's prophetic. These are the scriptures Jesus was explaining to them. You know, whom you seek <coughs> shall suddenly come to his temple, even the what? Messenger of the covenant, whom you delighted, behold, he shall come. Verse 2. And who may abide the day of his coming? He's not talking about rapture now. He's talking about his coming to the temple, to us, with this spirit without measure, this baptism of fire. And who shall appear, or rather, and who shall stand when he appears? For he shall, he is like a what? Refining what? Fire. It's fire. Before I close, this fire is not going to be a physical 
a physically observable fire all the time. Just like in Pentecost, occasionally God may show the fire. So don't go start looking for fire. <laughs> Amen, that's not what I'm teaching at all. It's called the baptism of fire. The reason is that it brings the glory of God. And the glory of God is manifested as fire. And the fire has a work that it is going to do. It's going to burn out whatever is left of the same nature in the soul and in the body. He's going to come as a refining fire. That's why it's called the baptism of fire. Hallelujah. It will fill you inside. Get your heart on fire. And keep your heart on fire. You will not grow cold again. Amen. Fill you with fire inside and outside. Fill you with fire in your heart. Fill you with fire in your body. It may not necessarily, again, I want to correct. <laughs> it may not necessarily be an observable fire. Occasionally, God may allow it. And you know, the Lord gave me the, the understanding. He said, I'm going to return the fire that left in the Garden of Eden. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But through Jesus Christ, what we lost in Eden, through the first Adam, the second Adam is now restoring it. You see, you need to understand that in Eden, Adam and Eve had no clothes. They were clothed with glory from top to bottom. So when they saw each other, they didn't see their nakedness. What they saw was glory. They just saw light. You see his fingers light. He, God would look like his hands light. His legs light. He couldn't see all the parts because it's all covered with light. Amen. My God, he was, he, was, he was crowned. The word crowned in Old English, it means he was, he was clothed with the glory of God from top to bottom. That's why he could walk with God. Fire is walking with fire. God will come down in the cool of the day. God is fire. God is light. And Adam and God will walk down together and talk. Fire talking to fire. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what happened until they fell. The day they ate of the fruit of that tree, of the, the fire went out and suddenly they saw that they were naked. But thank God for Jesus. He has come to restore. That is why when you come into Christ, you are called to obtain the glory. The, the one that was lost is now going to be restored. Now, of course, we're not going to take our clothes off. <laughs> you know, we're not going to take our, start walking around with fire from top to bottom. Uh -uh, uh, that, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's extremism and wrong. But this is it. Do you know what it is? You're, he's just going to rest. The way he restored the fire back to Jesus is exactly the same way he's restoring it to us. And we beheld his glory. As the glory of the only begotten of the Father at that time. So as they see you and I, they will behold our glory. As the glory of the begotten sons of God. The same miracles, the works that I do shall you do and greater works. That, that's, how the, that's how the glory is going to be restored to us. Hallelujah. Occasionally, once in a while. You may go up to a mountain and be transfigured before people. And they will just see that glory. It will just be for a few minutes and then you switch it off. That's what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. The fire was always there. God just let them see it. They just saw a sample. Boom! And you know, after a while, pew, switch back off. By the time they came down the, from the mountain, there was no more fire. It was there, but not visible anymore. So don't start looking for visible fire all over the whole place. Amen. What, we are, what the baptism of fire is going to restore to us the glory that Adam lost. It's going to give us the same glory that was on the Lord Jesus Christ when he was here. The spirit without measure that will enable us 
to do the miracles that he did. And keep our hearts burning for God. Because the fire is inside. And even, your, you, you, even in, your, in, your, in your physical body, you find this in Isaiah chapter 4. Let's quickly look at that. I, I got to close. Isaiah 4. I'm not talking to anybody here. Isaiah 4, look at verses 4 and 5. These are wonderful prophetic scriptures. Hallelujah. <coughs> Go to verse 3. To get the something. And it shall come to pass. That he that is left in Zion. And he that remaineth in Jerusalem. Shall be called holy. There's going to be an exodus. Out of Zion and Jerusalem. Because of the shaking that's going to come. I, I'm, that's not part of my message today. But I don't let you know. This glory, one of the main things is going to be used for. The, one of the main things it is going to be used for is to bring in the harvest of the nations. Isaiah 60. And Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Are you listening to me? And we're going to use that glory to... Discipline kings. I was talking today about Moses' Pharaoh and Joseph's Pharaoh. As, we, as, as the glory of God comes to the church and we're baptized with this fire and we go from continent to continent, from nation to nation, we're going to meet different kinds of rulers. We're going to meet those who will be like Cyrus and say, pray for us. No problem. We're going to meet those who will be like Nebuchadnezzar. Who initially may show a little bit of resistance, but with time will change. Then we're going to meet those who will be like Belteshazzar. Who will be taken out overnight. Hello. Oh, it's part of our ministry. Rule in the midst of thy enemies. Send forth the rod of strength out of Zion. Thou shalt strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Wound the heads over many nations. It's going to happen. And, and, and it's going to, it, it, it's what is going to create a conducive spiritual and political climate for the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom to all nations. There are nations now we can't go to. Pentecost can't enter it. The earnest anointing cannot break that yoke. It's going to take the spirit without measure. Break the yoke, break the king. And say, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up. And let the king of what? Glow or fire. Same thing. Let him come in. The fire will open a door that the other anointing, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the earnest anointing cannot open those doors. Amen? So primarily, that, uh, other things too, but primarily that glory is going to use to create the correct spiritual atmosphere that will change the political configuration of many nations so that the gospel can go in and the nations themselves will be transformed to what you see in Psalm 144. No complaining in our streets. Our youth will grow up. Our, our, our girls will grow up properly. Our young men will grow up properly. They will be great, you know, produce, you know, our bounds will be full of plenty. You, do you know that the main problem of this earth now is bad leadership? It's not resources. Nigeria is a classical example. There is P Chief Baba Femi Law. Of blessed memory. He said this. In the 50s. 50s. And he repeated it again. In the 70s. When he lost the election to Shehu Shagari. He said there is more than enough. Resources in Nigeria. To provide. Quality. Free quality education. To every Nigerian from the primary to university level. And he proved it when he was premier of the West. 
in only four years, and I'm not a politician, I don't belong to any party. I'm just giving you the facts. In only, you know, when we read about what our Lord did, you think he did in 10 years, or in 20, four years, 55 to 59, I was born in the golden age. Those of you who are born outside that time, God have mercy on you. We who were born in the, in the golden, me and Pastor Buega, the golden age of night, it was the golden age. My mother used to work here in, 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 in Ministry of Justice. Close, she was, she, was a, she was a lawyer. She used to work in the Ministry of Justice, very, very close to Simeon Adebo and Papa Olo. Those were the days. They, they planned things. Olo wrote this in one of his books, The Travails of Democracy and the Rule of Law. If I had my way, as of now, I don't have my way. But when the glory comes, by the grace and the mercy of God, I may have my way. You will not enter House of Assembly or Senate if you have not read our Lord's book. I will make it compulsory written. Not because I'm a politician or anything, because your head needs to be correct. You need to understand. You know what our Lord said? He said, he said some people say we have a monopoly of knowledge. We claim, rather, in his critics. You, know, you think you are the only one who knows. You know, you think, you know, that's one of the things. That it was envy. You think you're the only one who knows. You think you're the only one who has all the answers. Chief Howell wrote, he said, no, we do not claim a monopoly of wisdom. He said, the difference between us and the other people is that while they are carousing in the night, going from party to party, they are doing all one bear. Some of us are burning the midnight oil thinking on the problems of the nation. Give the Lord a clap offering. That was why a, 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 a one man could think through. Could think through. We got television before South Africa. First in Africa. Many European countries did not have television when we had WNTV. Are you listening to me? My father-in-law. Um, Oba, Oba Shanshi, who's a, who's a vet doctor who went to Edinburgh and then he went on to Cornell University. Western State Scholarship. Many of our professors today, many of them, they, they, it was that free education that our law provided selling cocoa, no oil. Don't you tell me it cannot be done. The problem is leadership. And God will raise another visionary leadership in this end time by the glory of God. Is one of the reasons why the glory must come. With the glory of God, we will remove the Belteshazzars and we will impose the Cyruses and the Aulahs. Aulah has gone home, he's dead now. But people like that, thinking men. The problem of Nigeria is not big. We just need a few thinking people. There is enough. Do you know how much they have stolen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They had a meeting the other day, federal executive meeting. They, they, so, some of the NNPC and a few other parastatals, did, they, did, they have not returned, they, they did not return 1.8 trillion. <laughs> Somebody came to my house yesterday, a very close friend who is close to government and knows a lot of things. You know, he was giving me Data. He said, Pastor, I am involved. He wasn't involved in the corruption and all that. He said, it is true. No, he was just telling me because he, he knew the, he had the facts. He said, he said, we can't find our money. Money that should have been repatriated to the federal account. Do you know what 1.8 trillion we do? There will be no strike in UCH today. You are University of Ife, Unilag, Unsuka, Amadu Bello, University of Bidi, all these universities will be fully equipped. We live in the golden age. We tasted a little of it. By the time we were, we were in school and were living, the corruption had started eating in. It was there, but it started getting here. When I was in University of Ibadan, we, 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 we paid almost nothing for school fees. Pastor G, remember, 
We used to eat with fifth. We used to eat with fifty kobo a day, not one naira. Fifty kobo. Breakfast was ten kobo. Lunch was twenty kobo. Dinner was twenty kobo. And come and see our lunch. Cup to postgraduate hall cafeteria. Three meal. Three course meal. We would eat, you could take rice, you could take dodo, you could have three or four pieces of chicken, you know, then you will have ice cream or jelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True story, oh. This same Nigeria. Yes. This same Nigeria. Yes. This same Nigeria. People will get they will get federal government bus free. Then they will get Oyo State bus free. Then they will get Ogun State bus free. With that money, undergraduates will go for summer holidays in England. Pay for your own ticket. This same Nigeria. This same Nigeria. When I was in, when I entered UI, I entered UI in September 1974. My first two years, they used to wash our clothes. They, they, they'll come in, the cleaners will come in and clean your room. I would take off my clothes, put it inside something, they would take it to the laundry, they'll come back, iron everything on my bed so that I can read. That's what a university is. It's not a place where you should be looking for water. And looking for food. So we could concentrate on our studies. I would come back from my morning lectures around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I will take a shower. Shower. <laughs> I will go to postgraduate or, or I'll, sometimes I'll use the central cafeteria. Or I'll, I used to like the postgraduate hall cafeteria because it was, you know, um, quieter. I would go because I was in Sultan Belo Hall. I'll just go around, I'll go and eat. Then I will come back. I will take a short siesta. You are. From about, because there's only two of us in the room. I would sleep until maybe about two, three o'clock in the afternoon after having lunch. Then I'll go for practicals. Maybe I have physics or chemistry practicals. I'll go to the lab, do all my work and everything. You know, when I come back in the evening because I've been in the lab and so that, I'll take another shower. Then I will go to I'll go for my dinner, three course meal. So that you are free to think. When I was in UI, almost I don't want to exaggerate. In physics department, maths department, because I did a lot of courses in math, particularly mathematics, you know, about half the lecturers were white. Because you I had constant exchange program. The guy who taught me vector calculus was from Oxford. His name was David Bolton. I still remember him very well. He was a Christian. He was actually an SU. We used to make fun of him and all of that. You know, he was a Christian. Very nice guy taught us, gave us uh, handouts, tutorials, and made sure you understood it. The guy who taught me uh, uh, another, one of my other courses, you know, in, in, in mathematics, you know, all this uh, um, linear algebra and matrices and all of that, was from California Institute of Technology. Why? Because you, I had constant exchange program. People like um, 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 Dr. Agulue and, 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 and Professor Hussein, they, they, you go to MIT, he'll go and spend two years, then he'll come back. Those were the kind of people who taught us. That's the difference between us and the people of the 80s. Ekweleo. <laughs> So when they saw your certificate in MIT or Imperial College or, you know, um, 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 California Institute of Technology, instant admission. If it's University of Baden, first class, no, no exam, nothing. 
Because they know the stuff you're made of. This same Nigeria. No difference, leadership. So we are going to change the leadership by the glory of God. End of message. How do you get the fire? The baptism of fire. How do you get glory? The answer is in that scripture in Malachi. You've got to seek it. Big difference between water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those are gifts. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Remember the people in Cornelius, they got it instantly. They didn't seek it. They got it. <laughs> baptism of the Holy Spirit is instant. Baptism of fire is not instant. You have to seek it. Ask. Seek and knock. The Lord whom you seek. Says, the choir sang it today. Says, don't cast away your confidence. Don't cast away the confidence of that baptism of fire. Says, which has great recompense of reward for he, the fire, that shall come. Say, he will come and he will not tarry. So let us, let's not be discouraged. Let's continue to press on. I got to leave a little message with you. It came from my wife this morning. She sent it to the brethren in our Royal Diadem group. But I want to share it with us. You know, it's all part of this message. You know, it's it's like a concluding part of the message. And you know, God just put it inside our heart. And it was such an encouragement. I'm just going to read it. And then after 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 the service, I will send it to all the other groups in the church. You know, um, let me just read it to you. Yeah, there we go. There it is. And this is how mommy said it. And she didn't know what I was going to preach. But this is a very good conclusion to this message. A blessed Sunday morning and a week, dearly blessed family, on behalf of Pastor OJ and myself, we trust you all had a pleasant night. The Lord will continue to help us give our hearts fully and wholly undivided to God in this new week in Jesus' name. We trust that we will be continually led by the Spirit of God and joy unspeakable and full of glory will be our strength in Jesus' name. We further pray that as we wait on him, we will run and not go weary. We will walk and not faint in Jesus' name. We thank God for the spiritual food and insight Pastor feeds us with on the forum. We also thank you for your various contributions to the forum. We appreciate you all. Let us keep running. God's words to us will no longer be prolonged. He will hasten to perform his word. The day of the baptism of fire is upon us. It's not something that's going to be long. It's imminent. Let us pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. The baptism of fire. We need that now. It's the bap- you can call it the baptism of the glory, same thing. But this, I just stayed scriptural. The, what the Bible calls was the baptism of fire. And he, the distinction, say you baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. It's not the same thing. One is earnest, the other is full measure, without, without measure. Hmm. Only this glory will change Nigeria. And not only Nigeria, only the glory will change the world. Today we are having a leadership crisis all over the world. Even so-called good countries where there's something, there's so much tension. They just killed another bunch of children in America yesterday. Little children! Because somebody will not change the laws on guns. And we will change it. Amen. Amen. By the glory. Little children. Just if the other one is not yet one month. It's a problem. It's a leadership problem. What is wrong in banning assault weapons? And having comprehensive background checks. What is wrong with that? I can just 10, 15 people, you know, deprive of us 1.8 trillion. Money that would be used for education. 
health care. That's why we need the glory. So we can strike through kings in our wrath. And rule in the midst of our enemies. And put the right leadership. We're not interested in the political leadership. But we're interested in the right people being there. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. with hope oh, as, as we lay as we lay aside we lay aside all earthly desire hands reach out reach out it's those that seek that we get it it's not automatic aspire holy spirit Spirit, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Let's start again from the beginning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Sincerity with passion. You 
Raise your other hand to God. Make it personal. Hold. I welcome you. I welcome you. In Jesus' name. Say, Father, we confess our sins and clean all of our hearts with the blood of Jesus from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, we have life. Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. Ah, Father, I thank you for your word, for the truth concerning the baptism of fire. To be filled within and surrounded by the fire of the power of the Spirit without measure that will burn up in me every earthly desire so i will be like jesus in my thoughts in my feelings in my desires in my emotions that your spirit the fire of your spirit will burn up every infirmity burn up every sin burn up every iniquity that my eye will be like a flame of fire. I will see like God sees. Uh, I will desire like God desires. Uh, I will conquer like God conquers. Oh God. God, I'm beseeching you. I'm seeking you for the baptism of fire. The power of the Spirit without measure. I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the earnest of the Spirit that I have, enabling me to speak in tongues. I am grateful. I am not, I do not despise this day of small beginnings, but I am not satisfied. I am not satisfied. And I will not be satisfied until you fill and surround me with your fire. So that with that fire, we can go to the nations and put the right leadership in place so that your word concerning all nations that make the Lord their God will be fulfilled. No complaining in our streets that our bands will be filled. Our young men and women will grow up properly. Oh God, fill me with your fire for this end time. In Jesus' name. Neka talama kurtu frenengas. No priki to frenengas. Zifridi kakromo shuko. Nehaka to frenes. Nangala kashala kiko fren. Lembridi kurtu frenes. Lo preneas. No frenela kashoko. Langardolo motulo moshe. Zefrio. Nongorolo moshala. Lo predi. Lo motulo moshala. Lambra kamatulo motu fredo frenfreshe. Shafri do fredo fredo freshengara. Tolomatulomatufri do fru freshi. Zufri di lo burkukulomatukla. 
In Jesus' name. On the air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a fifth partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Sango Ibadan. God bless you. Thank you.